you beautiful bastards. Doesn't really fit. Top of the morning to you, laddies. Can't do that accent either. What is up, Drama Alert Nation? Doesn't really fit either. You know what? Screw it. Hello everyone to the first episode of the Robloxian, where I'll tackle the top stories of the week around studio updates, Twitter drama, and anything and everything related to Roblox. I decided to start this week as a lot has happened, and without further ado, let's jump straight into it. First, let's cover some more serious news. Roblox is potentially facing legal troubles. If you don't know already, Roblox's infamous death sound, the oof, is actually taken from the 1995 game Messiah, and the owner of the sound is one, Tommy Tallarico. If I'm butchering your name, I apologize. His side of the story is as follows. He offered Robo uh, Roblox the opportunity to purchase the rights to the sound, and they declined. As a result, he may be pursuing legal action as he owns the rights to the sound, rights which are being infringed on by Roblox as they are using it in a commercial product. Now, I'm not a legal professional, but I believe that Roblox is going to lose this case. Their use of the oof sound is not transformative, as many parodies across the internet are, which, and that's why they can't strike those creators. Tommy is live streaming on his YouTube channel tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so if you have any questions for him, make sure to ask them there. But regardless of what happens, whether Roblox settles this out of court or actually gets sued, let me make this one thing very clear. Roblox will not be shutting down as a result of any settlement related to this. Roblox is a multi-billion dollar company and one lawsuit, unless it is completely devastating, which this one is not, will not shut them down. Next is the leak of some new character models. This comes from the user Chris12902 on Twitter and appears to be an update to the classic blocky model. Honestly, I don't think these look great, especially with the fact that the faces are sort of strange and they have actual hands. But if that's the direction that Roblox wants to take with their platform, can't really do much about that. Third, Roblox announced early this morning that they are looking for developers and games for the upcoming Egg Hunt 2020. This is pretty exciting as it means that they are still committed to the Egg Hunt event, but some users are definitely worried that it'll turn out like last year's Egg Hunt, where it was mostly a way for low effort games to gain some attention. If you guys are interested and want to sign up or learn more, I'll have the link down below. And now we get to some of the more interesting parts of the week, drama. Let's start with something a little bit less controversial. A couple days ago, a user by the name of Mathep accused Emirati, a prominent member of the Roblox Twitter community, of faking his giveaways that he so often does. This ultimately culminated in the suspension of Emirati's Twitter account. Ultimately, Emirati made a new account and the public opinion swayed against his accuser. However, they have since made it clear that neither of them want to pursue any additional drama related to this. So I'll leave it here, but let me make this perfectly clear. I have zero, and I mean absolutely zero, respect for anyone who attempts to game the system by buying followers using giveaways. It's just not right in my eyes, and I'm not going to support that. However, it is not okay to be witch hunting people who are doing things that you don't like. And finally, big story of the week is the restoration of Depride Isle, a game produced by the group Divine Sister. Honestly, do I need to cover this? Whatever, let's do this. The content was pulled from Roblox after being reported the cannibalism was in the game and restored after a period of protesting over various social media platforms. I myself have played the game since, and I don't think those claims are necessarily true as I haven't seen any instances of that in-game, though it might have been because I've only played around two hours. Regardless, I don't think the game should be allowed on the platform, and it is very clearly, clearly cult-like. Everything from the setting to the way that the owner of the group portrays themselves screams cult. And that is just something that I don't think Roblox should allow on their platform. If you guys are interested in LGBTQ support groups, there are many other options out there. 
And that's going to be it for this week's episode of The Robloxian. Tune in whenever I post the next one. And for anything and everything Roblox related, I am Mac and Swiss, the most Asian brony on the internet. And I will see you all next time.